afternoon. My name is Burns. It's a pleasure meeting you, sir. I've been looking forward to this since the day we started. The pleasure's all mine. Boonesboro can always use a few more settlers. Well, we didn't come to settle here, sir. We uh, just stopped by to see if you could be persuaded to guide us to some land we purchased from the government. It's a few leagues north of here. Well, if you don't mind, I think we'd better find a seat over here and talk this over. Hey, right, whatever you say. I'm sorry to tell you this, Mr. Burns, but you can't take women and children into this country. And why not? Well, I suspect you'd all be massacred. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Mr. Boone. Uh, the government land agency assured me the land was purchased from the Indians. The treaty had been signed. I'm sure it was. Well, then. Well, I know it's uh, confusing, but you see, Indians don't own land the way we do. And what probably happened is some Cherokees in the south or some Shawnees in the north probably did sign a treaty to a couple of hundred miles of land they don't even own. Are you trying to tell me we don't own the land we purchased? I'm trying to tell you it doesn't matter whether you own it or not. Chief Umaka's not going to let you settle it. Well, Chief Umaka? Yes, he lives about here between the two rivers. And he's never signed a treaty, and he never will. Experienced trappers avoid the area. I'm sorry, there's plenty of good land to the let south. Let me ask you a question, Boone. Weren't there Indians here when you first came? Yes. Hi. Then I'm sure we shall do as well. After all, it's hard to imagine one group of Indians being any more terrifying than the next. And the men of my party are very well armed. Now, will you be guiding us? Would you have any objections to taking a few precautions? Mr. Boone, I am not a fool. I have no intention of marching into Indian country with flags waving and drums beaten. But you uh, would march in with women and children? Aye, that I will do. All right. I'll compromise with you. Explain yourself. I'll take you into Chief Umaka's country. Just you. Alone. But I fail to see what purpose that would serve. Well, at least it'll give you a chance to see what you're getting into. And it just might save a few lives. That is very well put, Mr. Boone. All right, we'll do it, you and I. We'll go and see what this Chief Wamaka has to say for himself. Hmm? <laughs> Daniel Boone. Maka, this is uh, James Burns. He's the chief of a group of white settlers. What does he want? He wants to bring his settlers to live between the two rivers. They're farmers. And come in peace. No. Would you be looking at this, Mr. Chief? So much for your great chief, will not I tell you, Boone, these people are like children. You give them... Hey, what do you think you're doing? Your people must be very poor. What are you saying? These are first quality goods. You want to bring your people to my land? Aye. When you bring me 20 rifles, like that one, my council will agree to what you want. There'll be no rifles, Wamaka. I know you will say so. 
Why don't you have your counsel come and look at these goods? They're all prime. You will not speak to me of rifles? I will speak to my counsel. Perhaps you have time to waste, Mr. Boone. I have not. Burns. If the silly peacock wants a few rifles, why not give them to him and have it over with? I hope you're joking. I most certainly am not. I've got 15 families sitting there in Boonesboro watching their plowing season go by. Now, considering that, what's the price of a few rifles? Burns, you give a Marcus Braves 20 rifles. There won't be a live settler, man, woman, and child within 100 miles. You might frighten some women and children with that kind of talk. But I've seen your dangerous chief Wamaka now. I must tell you, I'm not too impressed. Suit yourself, Chief. You know, asking your permission was merely a courtesy to you. Now my people will just move on to the land without permission. What do you say to that? Tell him to turn her loose. Oh, Dan, they've got him. They've got Israel. Where is he? I think you will bring me 20 rifles, Daniel Boone to this place before one moon. Now, oh, wait. Wait! Stay where you are. Boone, you're not going to let him just get away with this. For the sake of heaven, man, it's your son. I begin to think white men are fools. You listen to me, you're ignorant silence. Burns! The reason he called you a fool, Burns, is because he thinks you ought to know that right now there's an arrow pointed at your heart. And there's one pointed at mine and one at Rebecca's. And if we make one wrong move, there'll be one for Israel, too. Now, you just climb back up on that wagon. Maybe beat a big drum, too. Huh? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> A smart boy. I like you. Here, drink. You want to be even more smart? You forget about your father for now. You will not see him for one more. You don't know my Paul. Your father. He is the most smart man of all. Huh? But sometimes he needs a little help. I don't know what you're talking about. What's supposed to happen in one moon anyway? You understand what trading is? Uh-huh. So when you got something I want, I got something you want, we swap them. That is what will happen in one moon. You mean you're going to trade me? Yes. Chief Wamaka will. To my paw? Yes. You can't do that. I already belong to him. Not now. That's not trading. That's just plain stealing. Pa says the most important part of trading is the golden rule. What is that? Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. A very wise rule. Maybe you should tell it to Chief Wamaka. Maybe he doesn't know it either. Chief Wamaka is busy waiting for his 20 rifles. Is that what you're going to trade me for? Rifles? My pa wouldn't give Chief Wamaka rifles. 
What about his golden rule? What do you mean? Your father. He has a rifle, huh? Best in Kentucky. But Chief Wamaka, he has none. But... This look like the place? Becky? No, I think it's a bit further towards Boonesboro. A mile or so. Oh, Dan, I can't be sure. All right, Burns, let's go. Hey, huh? I'll be glad to repeat my offer, Mr. Boone. I appreciate that, Mr. Burns. I told you that before, but I'd appreciate it even more if you'd do what I ask you. Given Wamaka rifles in the answer. Take your party into the valley to the south. We've got a treaty with the tribes there. There are other settlers there, and they're doing fine. Ah, uh, that's just it. There are other settlers there. What is it you're looking for? Farmland or a personal kingdom? You needn't have said that. Strikes me I could be asking you the same question. It's all too apparent the great Daniel Boone, the great Indian expert, is so disturbed at the prospect of losing face before a few scraggly savages that he's ready and willing to gamble with the life of his own son. I wouldn't say anything more, Mr. Burns. Mrs. Boone, it's out of compassion for you that I made my offer. If your husband's such a kind-hearted man, why doesn't he discuss the matter with you? Where's his concern for your feelings? What do you say, Rebecca? Do you want to take Mr. Burns up on his very kind offer? Yes, Daniel, I would. Nothing would make me happier than to accept your offer, Mr. Burns. If I had my way, I'd rush back to Boonesboro and collect those rifles, and I'd give them to Wamaka. I'd give Wamaka his rifles. I'd give him anything to get my son back home, safe in his own bed. But then I don't have that right, do I? Well, I'd say that you do, Mrs. Boone. I, I'd say you have every right. You mean I have the right to sacrifice your children in exchange for my child's life? I'm afraid I don't quite understand what you mean by that. What she means, Mr. Burns, is that she's seen a settlement after a massacre. She knows what your settlement would look like. Well, perhaps I'm wrong. Let's say that I am. I, I still don't understand what's so different about Wamaka. I, he's an Indian. There are Indians to the south. In this valley, you keep harping about it. He's smarter than most. He knows that he's fighting for his life. You sound almost as if you got sympathy for him. Well, I can put myself in his shoes, Mr. Burns. He knows in a few years his land will be covered by settlers. And he's vowed that'll never happen while he's still alive. That makes him dangerous. Too dangerous to put rifles into his hands. Well, you may be right. I don't know. Maybe we should go south, after all. There's good land there, Mr. Burns. You won't be sorry. Dan, there, I think that's it. Whoa! Was there only one brave with Israel? The other two called him Akari. I want you to stay with Cincinnati until I get back. Dan, do you have any idea where they took him? No, Becky, but don't worry, I'll find him. Maybe you know your father best. Maybe he will try to follow. Look out, there he is! <laughs> what are you doing? your father will remember to bring your fine cap along with Wamaka's rifles. Come.
Good night. You will sleep well. But you said that'll be real nice. You think I forget about your father, huh? A minute, I thought maybe you did. No. How come you built a fire? Last night you wouldn't. Tonight we are in my country. Last night we were not. That isn't gonna make any difference. Paul will probably see the smoke, smell it, and he'll be here before you know it. I do not think so. You just don't know my Paul. I do not need to know him. If he is following us, then he is following on foot. He will be a day or more behind us. But I do not think he is following us. stay here, huh? Where are you going? Through there is the sacred burial ground. I must ask permission of the guardian for you to enter. You gonna be gone long? Aha! You are afraid of a few old bones, my warrior. No, I'm not. Do not worry. I will only be gone a short time. <laughs> I should have much pride today. Today I won a victory over the great Daniel Boone. Yes, a very fine victory. What is it? Have you found your tongue? What do you mean you won a great victory over my paw? A man is only as good as his sons. When I cause a man's son to walk with his eyes on the ground and his feet dragging, then I have defeated the man. Perhaps not.
Are you afraid? It's only a cemetery. But sacred to my people, huh? Since I cannot leave you alone, you must walk only in my footsteps and remain very quiet. Can you do that? This groan is forbidden to strangers. You know this well, Rakari. It is the request of the great chief. He asks that I be permitted to keep his prisoner here for safekeeping. For how long? For one moon, old one. Then he will be returned to his father or sent to one of our villages. He may stay. I will prepare food for you. Nishka. Sit down here. Soon there will be food. Niska, you were told not to come here. Niska! If I leave you untied, will you try to run? You should catch me if I did. That is right. Carl? Who's that boy? Niska, the son of Wamaka. You mean the chief? The great chief. Why does he crawl like that? Some kind of prayer or something? He crawls because he cannot walk. Oh. Was he born that way? No. It happened two winters past. He was 14. His first battle at his father's side. He was hit by a white man's bullet. Oh. What's he doing here? He is praying for death. You think this terrible, huh? Well, what would you do if you had to live your life as a turtle? I don't know, something. I just wouldn't sit in a cemetery. Why doesn't the chief do something? In his own way, he is doing something. He is trying to get the white man's bullet into his own hands. It is because of Niska that you are here, Israel Boone. It is because of Niska that your father gathers rifles to bring to Wamaka in one moon. No appetite, Becky? Or is it the way Cincinnati's cooks? I guess it's just my appetite, Ben. I'm not very hungry right now. Well, that's understandable. But you gotta eat something. Yeah. Listen, if that stew doesn't suit your fancy, I'll go in and cook something up myself. Oh, no, this is fine. Please, you don't have to make such a fuss over me. Listen, Daniel told you to stay here, didn't he? Yes. Well, then somebody's gotta look out after you. It ain't gonna do Israel no good if you're sick when he comes home. Too soon for Dan to return, even if he's found Israel. I come to tell you we'll be leaving soon. Just about hitched up and ready. Good luck, Mr. Burns. I know you're going to like that country this south. I know you won't be sorry it turned out this way. No, but I am sorry, Mrs. Boone. I can barely find the words to tell you how sorry. You see, I realize now it was my stubbornness that brought you all this trouble and anguish. If anything happens to your son or to your husband, I'll never be able to forgive myself. Nothing is going to happen to them. I'm sure Dan's found Israel already. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is he going to stay there all night? He might. He is waiting for the spirit of death. Perhaps it would be best if it came. Don't you even feel sorry for him, Akari? He is my brother. I mean, you're Chief Omaka's son, too. Why can't you talk to Niska? Try to cheer him up somehow. I have talked and talked until my tongue threatened to fall from my mouth. But words cannot give him a way to walk upright. seem to have lost my knife. Oh, borrowed it. I hope you don't mind. It might have been better if you had asked. You were sleeping so hard. I hated to wake you up. What are you doing? Making some crutches. Some what? Crutches. I saw my pa make them once for a friend who had a broken leg. I see. Tell me something, Israel. Is there anything your pa cannot do? I don't know. I don't think he can play the fiddle. But you are not sure? No, can't exactly say I'm sure. And uh, what will you do with these crutches? They're for him, Niska. What are you doing? I just want to measure these. You don't suppose you could scooch this way a little bit? I'm not supposed to go in there. Go away. I just wanted to... I got the general idea. A little bit too long. You don't suppose I could borrow your knife again, do you? Too short. You're a little too long. Wait a minute. How's this? Good. for you. 
You made these for me. No, I didn't. A man with yellow hair. Your brother? It is the same thing. Now, let them burn. myself. Are you a woman? Less than a woman. A turtle. No, you're not. You're just not swinging yourself right. Here, let me show you. show our father. He will be very pleased. But you will not see our father until he returns with the rifle. But you remember the council meeting? The talk of rifles? Every white man, woman, and child must die. You remember? Without exception. I remember. But now you would like to make an exception. Huh? Maybe two or three. Maybe there are more like this small one. Akari. Yes, my brother. What is the answer? I do not know. Perhaps there is none. And the rifles? The rifles will make death. That is what they are for. Akari. Yes, my brother. Perhaps if, if we would... We obey our father, Niska. He is the great chief. Forget about your father. Get rid of Daniel Boone as fast as you can, old man. Nishka, wait a few moments after he is gone. Then follow him to be sure he really goes. Then come back and tell me. On these? Yes, on those. come. Perhaps I will tell him where he will find his son. Perhaps the counsel and your father will put you to death for such treason. You forget, old man. I came here to pray for death. But no longer? Yes, no longer. Look, there. <laughs> Mm 
Who are you, white man? I'm called Boone. Why do you come to this sacred burial ground? I mean no disrespect, old man. I'm looking for my son. There is no white man here, as you can see. Just myself and this young brief. My son is still a child, not a man. It's yellow hair. Have you seen him? Go and look inside if you wish. There is no one here. You know a brave called Akari? No, I do not know him. Perhaps you'll stay and share our food. It is better than nothing. All right, thank you, but I have no time. I know a brave called Akari. How do they call you? Niska, the brother of Akari. You know where he is? This one has not seen anyone in many moons. He has been here with me. I have not seen my brother for many moons. How did you get the crutches? He made them. Yes, I made them. You were almost a Greek fool. I was almost a turtle too, old man. Here, help me up. Where are you going? To make sure he has gone, as Akari asked. is gone. You brought him here. He followed me. You brought him here. I brought him here. What will you tell my father? I will tell him the truth. And I will die. No. I will tell him we traded Israel Boone for something more important than rifles. Think you got the hang of it? Yes. There's one, you ready? Yes, Pa? You got a long way to travel. Yes. Those two could be great friends. If we let him. I would speak to my father. Be nice if he'd listen. Yes. Yes, it would. Mm -hmm. 